Hello, welcome to part two of Spurverse. I'm still here. It's the same gang, the first team. We're back together. We haven't actually moved. Uh, first up in Spurverse part two, Wembley. Apparently, we have matched Chelsea's £15 million bid, according to the Evening Standard, their offer to go to Wembley in 2017-18 when we're getting our big new 61,000 yeah. ground built. What do you think of that? Wembley, good shout? Ridiculously overexcited. Ridiculously yeah. overexcited. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. I mean, Wembley has awful atmosphere, but I mean, yeah. the fact that, you know, we could potentially get, what, 60, 70,000 people in there? Potentially, you, yeah. Can potentially you imagine the North Island Derby? Just, just pause and have a little think about that. Yeah, that would be interesting. And also, I mean, like, I would do anything not to have to go to Milton Keynes Absolutely. every week. Oh, yeah. 100%. And the thing is, like, the ground chair thing with Chelsea has actually always been on, really. The FA, who obviously is in charge of deciding who gets Wembley, can't be seen to be favouring one Premier League club over another, even with the money situation. So if Spurs have now matched Chelsea's bid, there is actually literally yeah, no, no reason, reason, provided they can work the schedule out, there is no reason that the FA actually can't turn around and say, do you know what, yeah, we'll take the vote. It's and also, it's more money for them. And much more convenient for me on the, <laughs> on the Jubilee Ooh, line. I'm, in right fairness, the, I'm, I'm on the northern bit of the Jubilee line. Fairness, it would be an absolute delight. Let's be honest, it's more convenient for everybody. No one wants to go to Milton Keynes, do they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of roundabouts um, there. All right, not fun. let's talk about the Sunderland game. Uh, what are your thoughts in first off, Craig, in the Sunderland, the Sunderland match? Good win. Perfect way to respond to losing to Leicester. Yep. Um, very emphatic. We battered them. The first half was very cagey. Yeah. I mean, the first half, it wasn't looking good, but second half, uh, we got it together, and I was happy overall. It was an important time to score, wasn't it? That Massively important, because um, it was, you know, the kind of hallmark of Sam Allardyce's side. He will come, when he's coming away from home especially, he will come to frustrate you, he will come to close you down, smother the game, be boring as anything, but it can yield results. And obviously, when they then hit us and scored very late on in the first half, you were thinking, oh, God his game plan's really working. Yeah. To hit that before half-time, to go back and level with all the momentum in our direction, you, you literally felt the stadium lift at half-time. I mean, I was there, and the atmosphere just changed instantly when we scored that equaliser. And I think in the second half, we just completely pushed on there. I think it's a case of being patient, which yeah. we've had to do against quite a few lower teams this season. Yeah. They, you know, We are a different proposition now. Teams are coming to try and not let us score. They're not necessarily coming to score themselves. So we have to kind of work our way out of that frustration, be patient, play the long game. In the second half, you know, our fitness, our general superiority always tells against these, these lower sides. It's yeah. just a case of not panicking yeah. when things don't go our I will, I will say though, I feel like Sam Allardyce's tactics kind of backfired against him because uh, he actually changed the whole formation and played uh, wing backs and had three at the back. And then that's when we scored our three goals, which was Plus. I don't know why he did that because when when they when they were winning, like he had a formation, it was working, and then he made those changes, and then we yeah took off a striker and brought on their new signing defender who got a deflected goal and gave away a penalty. Yeah, Good poor love debut, mate. Well, wasn't his greatest. Tell you who I was impressed with in the Sunderland game, uh, a little boy by the name of Jermaine Defoe. Oh. I thought yep. his first touch was better than it ever was at Spurs. Hey, 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 he had a first touch. Whoa. He did have a first touch, <laughs> but he wasn't chesting it down and winning headers at Spurs. Towards the end of his Spurs career, he yeah. was. I think, do you know what I, I, I always say about Jermaine Defoe? Because everyone's like, oh, he's selfish. He doesn't bring other people into the game. But I think the last two seasons at Spurs, he was starting to do that. I think it just came with age. Yeah. Getting yeah, older, more mature, understanding the game a lot more. Because when he was young, all he wanted to do was shoot. Yeah. Well, he was quality at holding the ball up, which uh, was. which was really impressive, and he was let down by a frankly a pony at Sunderland side. <laughs> we sang, um, his, yeah, name, yeah, we, yeah, we sang yeah. name, his name a lot on Saturday, yeah. and it was nice. I, I enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, he was a good lad. It also, good. when it he missed good. that chance when he was through. Yeah, he did it on purpose. He did it for me. Spurs lad. Uh, yeah, I had, I'd had a little chat beforehand. And I was like, look, Jermaine, just you know, just not today, not today. He knew what he was doing. He, yeah. he, yeah. he, he made it look realistic. Put it into side thing. Classic. John McDermott. John McDermott, our uh, head of coaching and player development, responsible for people like Ryan Mason, Harry Kane, Danny Rose, has rejected Legend. Man United. Man United <laughs> have come in to try and poach him, and he has said, no way, no how, I'm the Spurs boy. You know what, I love that. You know what, give him a flipping plaque. Give him his own cement outside White Hart Lane. That is what I like to see. Yeah, lovely bit of cement, please. Yeah, yeah that, that's a great print. What an honour. <laughs> Do um. it. No, it's brilliant news. It's brilliant yeah. news. And it's showing, everyone's talking this season, there's a little bit of a, a power shift in the Premier League as a whole and like the idea of what the bigger clubs are doing, what the medium clubs are doing. This is a perfect example of it. If this had been a couple of seasons ago, you know he would have been off. Yeah. Not anymore. Because let's face it, the way things are at Man United at the moment, would you want to go there no. with the with the backroom staff in the turmoil that it is, and you know their form being so up and down, and they are playing some of the worst football I think I've ever ever seen. 
Would you actually plus, want to go there? He's banging out hit after hit with the players oh, that yeah, he's yeah. going through. The oh, English yeah, lads. Yeah. Plus, English who, lads. who is he going to nurture over there? Flipping Blackett and flipping. <laughs> who else have they got? Lindergaard. <laughs> like, some, any rubbish talent. Yeah, I said it. It's not good enough over there. No one wants to nurture none of that. I think the only prospect they've got is like Luke Shaw, and he's pretty much established. Yep. Exactly. I didn't even come from their ranks. <laughs> Bingo, no one in your ranks. <laughs> Who have you got over there? We've got Onomar Winks. Who are yep. you? Killing also, who are you, we've United? got Nathan Adua, who is back to Spurs from Rangers. Oh, yes. Uh, have you seen much of the boy? He oh, was, yes. Uh, I've seen a fair bit. Fair bit of boy playing Good few Rangers. skills. Skills at Rangers. Then if, getting taken out, getting his legs broken. Well, over. this is the thing. If you haven't seen the rainbow flick, uh, go YouTube it, Google it, whatever. The rainbow flick that he played in one of his first games for Rangers. So cheeky, so brilliant, amazing bit of skill. Plus. The fans loved it, the players hated it. Consequently, everyone in the Scottish Championship has tried to break his legs in every game now. Oh, but wow. Do you think the great. guy, uh, I think he's great. Do you think he's got a chance of uh, getting any first team minutes for us? Why not? Why not? Under Poch, I'm under Poch, of course. Yeah. Of course yeah. he has. If he plays well, he'll be rewarded. He'll and get you, his chance. Do you want to see him? Do you want to see him play? Yeah, why not? Go especially because he yeah. offers us a little bit. You know, we talk sometimes about how we struggle with putting players out wide who yeah. perhaps aren't wide players, like the likes of Ericsson. He is a natural winger. That's his position. Good and way to change it up yeah. during the match. And the thing is, yeah. when we beat Leicester in the FA Cup replay, and we will beat Leicester, <laughs> he can play against Colchester. <laughs> get a couple of minutes against Colchester. Yeah, good shout. Yeah, why not? There's some games coming up. Fair enough. Well, uh, thank you for watching. This has been Spurvets Part 2. Let us know what you think. Uh, is Wembley more convenient for you? Do you live on the Jubilee line? Let's have a coffee. <laughs> uh, and what do you think of Defoe? Am I being harsh on his Spurs years? I mean, obviously he was quality. Yes. He was quality at Spurs. I've just never seen him chest it down and hold it up as well as he did against us. That's all I'm saying. Uh, obviously, good to keep John McDermott. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. Uh, follow us on Twitter, at Spurred on TV. We'll see you soon. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Tottenham Transfer Talk with me, Jack Bryden. First up tonight, Spurs, according to French sources, Spurs have had a £6.1 million bid rejected for Toulouse striker Wissam Ben Yedder.